everyone, it's Kelly for Soy and Shea and thank you for joining me. Today I am sharing with you a nice quick and easy project which is great for Christmas presents. We are making some bath milk and I have left my recipe down below for you. First thing I'm going to add into my bowl here is a little bit of Natrazorb which is a modified tapioca starch and it's really good at holding wet, li wet liquids, keeping them nice and dry. And the reason that I want them to stay dry is that so I don't end up with a really wet mess in the bottom of um, the containers that we're going to put this bath milk into. I want it to stay a really nice dry powder. So the next thing I'm going to add in here is my fragrance oil. And I am using Honey Wash Type from Aroma. And I'm going to make sure that I blend it into this um, Natrazorb really well. It will go into an almost like breadcrumb consistency but what will happen is when this Natrazorb hits the bath water it dissolves down and it releases that fragrance out but it doesn't actually release the fragrance into the rest of the product until it hits that water. So I'm going to get this all mixed up nicely and it will resemble like a, a breadcrumb sort of consistency. Okay, so we have all that now mixed in. If you do ever find that you need a little bit more natural sorb because of your environmental conditions, you can always add that in to make sure that it is nice and absorbed into it. Okay, so I want my bath milk to be a nice relaxing experience. So I'm adding in some chamomile flowers, but I really do not like floaty things in my water. So I'm going to um, put these into my Nutribullet and I'm going to blend it down into a nice fine powder. Okay, so I am going to have to do this in a couple of lots. My bigger sort of jug for my Nutri um, Ninja is wet, so I don't want to put anything into it right now. It doesn't matter if there are still a few little bigger clumps of those calendula petals, but I do want a majority of it actually ground down. Now I am, even though I weighed it into my container, I am weighing it back into my bowl as well, just to make sure that any of that loss of the um, powder when grinding it down is taken into account. So I will get the rest of this ground up and then we'll move on to the next bit. Okay, so I have the last of my calendula all done up now. Now if you, do, if you don't mind floaty bits in your bathtub, then you can always just not go through the whole blending of it. Um, however, if you aren't going to blitz it up, I would actually suggest using less of the calendula powder than what I am putting into mine otherwise you'll just kind of get this overload of calendula petals into the bathtub so that or you could even do half of it um, blitzed up like this and then the other half you can do as whole petals. So the next few items that we're adding into the bowl now are all ingredients which are known to help soften the water when you are in the bathtub. The first thing I'm going to add in is a little bit of bicarbonate of soda and I'm going to pop it through the sieve um, just to make sure we don't have any of those big clumps in here. The next item going in is some kaolin clay. I'm also going to add in some colloidal oatmeal. It's meant to be very soothing on the skin and because I do want this bath milk to be a really soothing, relaxing experience, this is a great addition. Now you can make your own colloidal oatmeal by grinding up um, oatmeal. Um, I do however find that by purchasing this colloidal oatmeal, so it has actually gone through that extra sort of processing to get it really nice and fine you do end up with a really nice fine powder 
that very quickly dissolves and disperses into the water whereas I have found that if I do my own using oats it doesn't seem to dissolve as quickly and you do still end up with some little bits um, in the water as well. Now of course we can't have a bath milk without adding some milk powder so you can put whichever sort of milk powder that you want in here. I'm using buttermilk powder but you could use um, goat's milk, you could possibly even use coconut milk powder. Any powder, that, any milk powder that you want to will be fine and you can even put in a combination of milk powders as well. I'm just going to give this a little bit of a stir while I still can and I'm going to contemplate whether I actually need to move this into a slightly bigger bowl. We are making just over a kilo of uh, milk powder here today. You can, because I give you the recipes in percentages, you can make this recipe into any size that you want. So if you just want a couple of little bottles to give away to family and friends over Christmas, you can certainly make the recipe a lot smaller. Okay, so I've decided I am actually going to split this mix in half. I'm just going to grab myself a dry cup here. Um, if you are prone to dust flying around, I do highly suggest wearing a dust mask when you're doing this one. Um, I seem to be okay with this, so and I'm not making too much dust at the moment. So I am just splitting this powder out evenly between the two bowls here. And then I will add my salts into them. Okay, so now it's time to add my salts into this bath milk. And I'm going to use a combination salt. So you can use whatever salts that you like. But I would suggest avoiding Dead Sea salt because that is a salt that draws in moisture a lot more than the other salts do. And it will make your mix really wet and gloopy. So the first one I'm going to add in is some Epsom salts. So we'll do one bowl at a time here. Oh, and that's heaps. And I also have some Himalayan pink salt here. Um, I'm choosing to use all really fine grain salts here because I want them to actually melt down nice and quickly when you pop them into the bath. So if you aren't too worried about them dissolving really quickly, you can use um, your, your salt rock crystals. Um, you could use yeah, basically anything that you really want. The other one I'm adding in here is some fine sea salt. And we'll just grab that one. And again, this is a really nice fine salt that will dissolve pretty much straight away as soon as it hits the water. So for me, bath milks are all about having just that nice milky bath without having too many floaty bits or waiting for salts and things to dissolve. So that is our first bowl. We'll just get all those ingredients measured back out into this second bowl here. So the fragrance oil that I have chosen to use, the Honey Wash, it's a quite a sweet fragrance with notes of honey and it also has some berries, there's a little bit of musk in there. It's a really nice sweet fragrance. It's very, it's along those sort of lines of the oatmeal milk and honey sort of um, tones. However, I found that my customers don't really like that fragrance oil very much, but they do like this Honey Wash, so that's why we're using that one. I'm just going to give this a really good blend through there just to make sure that the salt is evenly dispersed and then we'll get to bottling. Okay, so I have got some little milk bottles here which I picked up off of eBay. I'm just going to pop that straight onto the scale there with a little funnel and then I'm going to just spoon my mixture straight into the top here and hopefully not make too much mess. Now when you are making this, if you decide also that you don't want to use fragrance oil, you want to keep it very natural, you can use some essential oils. Um, you may even want to just leave it out completely and use 
the natural smells of the milk powder um, within the product as well so it really is up to you how you make this I have given the recipe down below in percentages but because there is no sort of emulsification needed in this it is very easy to change it up and add more or less of different ingredients as you go along so I'm going to keep doing this I may even give up with the funnel and just spoon it straight into the containers let's see if that's going to be a little bit quicker no I'll just end up with a mess <laughs> so I'm going to keep persisting with the little funnel here it's not too bad it is flowing through quite easily so we will get all of these filled up So we are down to the very last bottle here so we're just going to get this one all filled up and then I will start printing up the labels hopefully we'll have just enough to go in this one I think we will so we're just gonna tip that last little bit in and then I'm going to go and print up the labels and we'll be back in just a moment Right, so we're now up to um, labelling these bottles. I have all my labels here which I designed myself in Corel Draw and then I printed them up using my laser HP printer and I'm just going to pop the labels on the front here. Now when you are doing your labelling be sure to check your own country's um, rules and regulations. Here in Australia we do have to make note of any allergens and the allergens should be highlighted or, or should be bold as well. So because this has got the milk powder in I have to have a note on there to say that there is dairy included. Now I have had a lot of people make comments about it and I do laugh about it as well you know when you buy some fish and it says contains fish and it's like well I really do hope that it does but having those allergens are really really important I actually do have an allergy to milk um, when I consume it and it's not the lactose it's the actual protein in milk that makes me really quite ill so and it when it gets written onto labels it can sometimes have some pretty funny names and unless you actually have the allergy you don't know that they are milk products and sometimes you look at the back of a product and there's like 30 different ingredients and you've got to stand there and go through every single one of them to see if you can actually eat that product or not and some people who do have the milk allergies it does go as far in that they can't even have milk on their skin because it does really irritate them so by having that little warning on the bottom it does mean that for people like myself that do have those allergies and we're in a hurry we can quickly pick something up have a look to see what is bolded um, on the ingredients list and we can also have a look at that little bit at the bottom which says allergens may contain or does contain um, so that's really quite a important thing to pop on there all right, so we'll get this last one done up here and then that is the first item ready to go into these little gift packs that I am working on. Okay, so our bath milks are now all labelled up and they're ready to go in the gift pack that we're working on. So for our gift pack, we have these really cute little milk crates that I am using. I've had these for a few years now and I don't think you can get them anymore, but if you can, they are a really good way of displaying these products. So what I'm going to do is just take one of my bath milks, pop it into the corner one here, to start with I also have some little scoops to go with them so you can measure out that nice amount of bath milk to go into the bath and then we're going to move on to another project to fill another one of these cavities up 
So I hope you have enjoyed watching how I make my bath milk and that you give the recipe a go down below. If you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to ask and I will get back to you as soon as I can. If you have enjoyed watching me make my bath milk, why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below. And until the next video, have a good one. Bye.